Alright, come on in fam. Today is Muscle Monday, where we talk about them titties. Come on in. We're going muscles. Titties. Talk about them titties, baby. I said there's two of us, we got one dream and that's one love, yeah that's one love Between the both of us, we got one scheme and that's one love, yeah that's one love Together, Happy Monday, Beaches. Come on in, float some biceps and some gorillas for Muscle Monday. Come on in, come on in. Come on in, ladies and gentlemen. Candace to the main stage. Candace to the main stage. All these girls keep chasing views like they doing something. And all these boys keep making moves because they assuming something. Everybody doing fake friends like they crew or something. But all these people make my stomach sick like the flu or something. They crying X, 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 X because they prince is gone. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Flex, 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 flex because I'm money long. Let's do this. selling strong. Check, 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 check. Them titties, though. Yeah, real love, I owed you. Real love, I showed you. I wish for one Diamond to the main stage. Diamond. Main stage. <laughs> Let's do this. Sexy time. Oh. Make you beg for it. Let's go, fam. Three, two, one. Games. The birds are chirping. The bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Test, test, test. Testing, test, test, test. Test Ickles, test Ickles, test Ickles. Welcome everyone to episode 815 of the Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, gang cast, man cast, pimp cast, and sleaze cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps, the most muscular gain train that ever existed and ever shall be. And as you can see on the board behind me, if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, or the Facebook, we're talking about dem titties today. It's Muscle Monday, the first of its kind. We're going to see how this goes, see how you love it. I think you will. I think you will. I think you will love it very much. I think you will love it very much. Hi. Uh, very much. I usually love a muscle a Monday. Hi. daniel San. daniel San. Banzai. daniel San. Banzai. A throwback. A throwback to one of the greatest movies of all time. Welcome, Instagram. Welcome, everybody. And to the podcast on Apple Podcast and on the Spotify and elsewhere, everywhere. 815. Yeah, Muscle Monday. Let me put this up. What I want to start doing is putting the little thing on. So Instagram, you're only going to be here for a little bit. You're only going to be here for a little bit. And what you're going to want to do, and I'm going to make this announcement. So wherever you're watching, stick to it. This is Muscle Monday. And the reason why Instagram, you're going to want to come over here. Muscle Monday. Because we're getting some uh, picture in picture on the uh, on the other platforms, okay? So I, um, I'm i bringing up a 3D model and we are going to look through it. And I'm really going to, what you're gonna learn from Muscle Monday is every single Monday, we are going to pick a muscle, a muscle. And then I am going to break it down. I'm gonna visually show you what it looks like. We'll look at the insertion points. We'll look at why it's called, what it is called. So we're gonna do a lot of education today. So if you're a professional, or you just love to learn and you want to learn some awesome shit, which is probably why you're here. This is going to be really super sweet. And then what I'm going to do is explain exercises and we'll talk about some exercises that will target this muscle, you know, on that given day. So we'll break it down and um, we'll have discussions. And today we're going to be talking about the chesticles. We're going to talk about specifically the pectoralis major. And what I want to do is because some of you really love getting into more education, more science type stuff. So what I'm going to do 
is explain what these things. I'm going to um, normalize these terms because medical terminology is a fucking bitch. Medical terminology is a bitch. And I don't want, I want you to learn how to learn. And I think that's the best way to describe what I want to do here with Solnormous, why the Daily Swole is so cool, because I teach you how to learn, not I teach you things. We talk about things, we discuss, but with the elimination, right? How to approach your food, how to approach your training, to be more instinctual, to listen to your body. That is teaching you how to learn, how to think about things, not teaching you, okay, this is the answer. Go watch this. Go do this. Okay. And then you're just always trying to suckle the teat and find more information. And that's where most fitness things go. They try to give you the information so that you keep coming back for more. I want to teach you how to learn on your own. I want to teach you how to look at the human body and how to look at your training, how to look at your, your fitness on your own and how to grow your, cause everyone's going to, everyone's going to be serious in different ways. Everyone's going to be serious in different ways. So if I talk sciency, okay. Some people aren't going to care and want to pick up on that. Uh, but some of you want, might want more. So we're going to go after those, that aspect. All right. So we're going to grow into this together. So if you're watching on Instagram, I want you to start heading over there now, because if I'm explaining the muscles, what, you know, what, or what's, mm, you know what? I'll leave you. I'll leave you on Instagram. I'll leave you on, but I know a lot of people are going to be like coming in. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't get, it. I can't see anything, bro. It's because you're on fucking Instagram. So go over, go over. Actually, I'm going to cut it out. So some people might watch, go over to uh, Facebook, go over to um, Twitch and go over to YouTube. If you're watching on Instagram, you're going to have to, cause you're not gonna be able to see this. So let's, uh, not waste any more time and you can drop some comments. You're not going to see comments on the screen. When I go through the demonstration, you're not gonna see comments on the screen because then uh, you'll, it'll be blocking. So this is the pectoralis major. I'm going to bring this up. And then what we're going to do is discuss it. I'm going to kind of show you what the real detail is and extrapolate the most important things for you to understand. Okay. So Instagram, bye-bye, Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. I'll see you later, IG. Bye. Oh, thank God they're gone. Sheesh. Aren't they annoying? Isn't Instagram like annoying? It's just like that friend you just can't. You know, it's like when you tell a couple friends, you tell a couple friends, we're, you're going to go somewhere, but like, hey, don't tell Jimmy. Don't tell Jimmy where we're going. We don't want him to come. And they're like, okay. And Jimmy's like, hey, what's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? What you doing? What you talking about? You talking about me? Are you talking about me? <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, Jimmy. God damn it. God damn it, Sandra. Always following us. Shit. Fuck. Everyone knows that, right? All right. So no, I love Instagram. I love Instagram. So let's, <laughs> let's bring this up. Um, okay. So pectoralis major, Papa Swole is going small in the corner. So this is the pectoralis major. Looks nice, right? Looks nice. Look at this. Look at this butte. Look at this butte. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at this muscle. We're going to take a look at this muscle. Actually, let me try to bring on, let me bring on the chat. Let me see here. And then, but let's put it in the corner. We'll make it really small. So if you all want to talk, I'll let you talk in the corner. I'll let you talk in the corner. We'll bring it, you know, bring it over here. Let's go over here. All right, we'll, we'll keep it in the corner. All right, so everyone else can see if anyone's asking questions. So this is the, uh, this is a, the pectoralis major. This is a 3D breakdown of the pectoralis major and this is just the thoracic region so you see it all the way down from the pelvis all the way up to the neck so let's take a look at it. let's zoom in let's zoom in i'll bring up the chat again if there's a lot of questions and let's take a look at the pectoralis major okay musculus pectoralis major so what this image is showing are the three parts of the pectoralis major. So you see here, there's really no upper and lower chest. It's not upper and lower chest. You have three attachment points. You have one in the clavicle up here and the clavicle is, let me see if I double click. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong, I'm clicking the wrong window. All right. So this is the clavicular head. There's one area that attaches to the clavicle. There's one area down here, the sternal head that comes from the sternum. And there's one abdominal all right, the one abdominal head. So you have fibers down here that actually 
attach in the abdominal region. So you do have some fascial connective tissue, which is interesting, which is why uh, it's a good idea when you do chest dips, for example, to get some more protraction with the scapula. And if we come over here, this is the most important aspect of the chest. When you have an origin and an insertion of a muscle, which you always do, you always do. A muscle has an origin and an insertion and a muscle contracts towards the origin. So these three points that you see here, these three points are origins of the pectoralis muscle. So where it pulls on the arm, it pulls the arm towards those points. So the clavicular area at the top, the clavicular area up here, back up a little bit, that pulls up towards the clavicle. It pulls up towards that circle. The sternal head pulls straight across to the sternum and the abdominal head pulls a little bit down with some internal rotation. Okay, this comes very in handy when you start looking, you start discussing angles of the chest, you start discussing what is the best to hit certain parts of the muscle. There's no upper chest. Okay, this is the main thing that I wanted to kind of get across. There's no upper and lower per se. There is the abdominal head, the abdominal part. It's not the lower pec. Okay, there's the middle part, essentially, the sternal head. Sternal costal, it calls it because uh, it attaches onto the costal cartilage too of the thoracic area. And then you have the clavicular head. So you have the clavicular and you have the pectoralis major. But the important thing to notice is that you have different angles. Just because you have the fibers in the center here, notice how some are coming from a higher point and some are coming from a lower point. And each one of those fibers is going to pull directly towards the origin. It's going to pull towards the midline of the body. And over here, you have the insertion into, as they call it, in this app. And I'm going to give you the, this app is called uh, the Muscle Skeleton. I want to, I'll give you the information because uh, it's obviously an app I'm using. I'm not taking credit for uh, this content, but it is, I'll give you the, I'll give you the information. I'll put it in the, in the bio if you all want to check this out. The insertion point from the origin to the humerus inserts onto what I would learn as the bicipital or intertubercular groove. And I believe they call it here, the insertion, uh, they call it the crest of the greater tubercle. So obviously maybe they renamed some things uh, since I was in school. Cause I went in school, I was about, uh, it was like 13 years ago. I was in college learning, you know, this stuff and doing kinesiology. So the names and the, and the, the phrasing is different. Maybe they broke it down a little bit more. Um, so let's, let me read through this and pretty much let me break it down and explain what it means. So you're not looking at this and, oh my goodness, what the heck does it mean? It's very simple. You have the origin and this just breaks down what I just talked about, the clavicular, the sternal and the abdominal portion. The insertion is where the muscle attaches onto. So essentially the origin is like where you're standing. The insertion is where you're reaching out and grabbing. So the chest muscles are starting at either the clavicle, the abdominal region, or the sternal region, and reaching out and grabbing onto the arm and just pulling it in the direction of the fibers as you see. The clavicular portions are pulling more superiorly, the abdominal are pulling more um, inferiorly, and the sternal is pulling medially. So it pulls the arm to the front, and uh, this is where we get the, the actions. Okay, at the bottom, you see the green dot. This is where we get the actions of the muscle which is really important. The innervation, who gives a shit about the nerves? We don't care about it. It obviously is the reason why the muscle contracts, but there's no reason for you to learn that, okay? I don't keep this in my brain and it's not really important for our uh, purposes. The action is where this becomes important. So once you look and you see the, um, you see the muscle and you learn how the muscle actually looks, then what you can do is you can tell the action of the muscle you're going to be able to understand and kind of infer what the action is. So you see there's some fibers pulling from the top, there's some fibers pulling straight across, and there's some fibers pulling lower. So this makes sense for what the arm is going to do. And as you're going to learn, it is going to pull the arm forward. I mean, think of a push-up, think of a bench press as pulling the arm forward, which is shoulder and arm uh, flexion. It is also going to pull the arm towards the center of the body. Think flies, think what your humerus, your upper arm does, think what your biceps do. I mean, the, the brachial region. So the humerus, it pulls towards the midline. So it's going to pull the humerus towards the midline of the body, which is also known as adduction. It's adding to the body. It's pulling it closer to that center line. And you're also going to get 
internal rotation. And I believe this app calls it medial rotation, same thing. And the reason why it gets rotation is you could see right here, let's zoom in to this portion, okay? And I'll rotate this, see how it attaches to the front, but also a little bit uh, to the sides, right? See that, how it kind of wraps, it kind of wraps around here. Okay, I'm just gonna rotate this again. So it's not attaching directly to the front, it's kind of like wrapping around the side of it. So when it pulls, it spins the arm and that's that internal rotation. Okay, does that make sense? Just drop some comments if you're, cause I can still see your comments. All right, so notice how if we turn, see how it's wrapping around. Okay, it's not directly right in the front of the arm, it kind of hooks around the arm. So when the muscles contract, it spins the humerus. So it causes internal rotation. And this is a problem when you are always to the front, when you only do chest, when you're only driving, when you're only at a computer, it keeps your arm very internally rotated, which puts pressure on the rotator cuff, which puts pressure on the entire upper and the, uh, the, the scapular girdle and the shoulder joint and the shoulder girdle. And that can lead to chronic neck pain. That could lead to upper cross syndrome, all those things, right? So I hope this, um, this demonstration, you understand the chest a little bit more and look at those three dots. Okay. Let's take a look at those three dots. This is how the muscle contracts. It's reaching onto the arm and it pulls exactly in the direction of the fibers. It's not magic. It's science. This is not magic. This is science. And I should have put the, the name of the app as an overlay. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do that right now while I'm, uh, while I'm talking. Um, so that way I can put it because I do want to give, I mean, obviously this is not my program. I'm just explaining it. Um, let me just see if I can bring up the name. That was one thing that I forgot. One thing that I forgot to put up there. So I'm not trying to, not trying to steal, um, steal content, of course. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Muscle anatomy. I'll, if, if anything, I'll just put it in the info and that, that'll be better. And this is actually available, I believe, on the site. It was available on your phone, too. You can get this on your phone. This is actually, and it's also a Mac app. So I actually downloaded this app as a Mac app. And then you can get, you have to unlock. So it's an in, it's a paid in-app purchase. So I believe it's like, I want to say $14, $13 or $14 and you unlock everything. Otherwise you only get a couple sections. So, um, it, it's super cool and you can spin it, you can zoom in, you could do different layers and things of that sort. So we're going to be using this for our, uh, muscle Monday breakdown. Okay. But what I want to just remind, and I'll put that in the, I'll put that in the description, in the video description, just because, and then I'll put it as an overlay uh, next time we do it. Um, so the pectoral so look at the, look at the angles. Look at the angles of the fibers. So the clavicular portion, you could see how that will pull the arm more upwards, right? It'll cause more arm flexion. It'll pull the arm more from, let's say you're doing an incline fly, that will work more. On an incline movement, that will work more. As long as the muscle, and that's why cables are effective, that's why changing the angle is effective, because when you change the angle of the exercise, it will target certain fibers over the other. It doesn't mean there's an upper and a lower chest unless there is a drastic separation or difference in um, innervation, a different nerve might uh, target it. And there's different categories or reasons why they might separate the muscle or break it down as a different head or a different portion of the muscle. And um, I couldn't tell you exactly if it's always the same kind of criteria. So yeah, there's, yeah, and definitely there's a lot of apps out there. So you could just look around, but these are available and these are usually very medical. These are obviously used for kinesiology classes and for medical school. So um, usually they do, they do cost, but it's not too much. And just amazing how like a few years ago, these kind of things would be hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, but you know, a few bucks and all of a sudden you get all the information. Okay. Now let's go off for a different angle. And you could see right here, the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint specifically, which is the interaction of the humerus and the clavicle and the scapula right here, that little space. And I'll just rotate through that space right there. So you see that little space underneath. And if you have really tight pectoralis, you have a really tight pec major, and that's pulling too hard on the arm, and the lats do this as well, you get this misalignment. So this joint right here, the joint right here, this interaction of the humerus, this is alignment. This is what the rotator cuff does. It keeps this joint aligned. And if you have something like a bully, the pectoralis major is so tight, so strong, because you're always working that over and over and over and over again. Uh, 
and you, you know, kind of like the bro muscles, right? Everyone just does chest, does chest, and you're also driving, and you're also at a desk, and you're always watching TV, and you're texting on your phone. These muscles get very, very tight and stiff, and then it pulls that humerus. It pulls the head of the humerus right there out of alignment, and then you start getting rubbing in that little space underneath the, uh, the, the scapula and the acromial process, the clavicle. You start getting smaller space there. You get inflammation, and then that's when you start getting rotator cuff issues and shoulder pain and throbbing pain down your arm, those pain referrals and so forth. Okay, so those are the actions of the chest, and this is the reason why. It's not magic. Oh, I wonder what the chest does. What this, this kind of content, fam, this kind of content allows you to be creative. Learning science and learning about your body allows you to be creative in the gym because then when you know, oh, this is what the muscle does, these are the angles in which it works, then you change the angle of your press, then you do different angles for your push ups, then you use the cables and you try different angles. When you know what the body is supposed to do, then you can customize and quote unquote make up exercise or be creative. That allows you to be creative because you understand how the body works more. Okay, so super cool. And again, like I said, I will put the link to the app on the store. Uh, I'll put a link to the app or the name of the app and where to find it. I'm not sure if it's Google Play, but I have a Mac. So this is for this is a Mac desktop app. I think it also has. Um, an app for the phone, for both phones, for Android as well, I think, I believe. So you can check that out and I will put the details in the post descriptions ASAP. All right. So super cool for Muscle Monday and that's the pectoralis major. The action of the muscle is directly related to the origin and the insertion points. Where the muscle is going, what the muscle is doing, that is the ticket. That's how you can be creative. That's how you can create exercises. That's how you can manipulate and break down an individual workout. And that's why a lot more volume can be necessary for certain body parts. Because when you're trying to accomplish proper overload and training for your chest, in many cases, you need to focus on the different angles. You need to focus on the different forces that can be applied to that muscle. And neglecting certain areas will give you an unbalanced muscle it will give you a muscle that's more developed in certain areas. And some people don't have much of an upper chest. Some people don't have much of a lower chest. Some people don't have much of a chest at all. And it's important to understand that although basics work, basics work, the regular bench press straight ahead works. I mean, you saw most of those fibers are kind of coming at a horizontal angle. That's why standard pressing is works. If you don't have any mass period, you don't need to worry so much about upper and lower. You need to just work the basic right down the middle, drive in the middle of the road. But then as you develop, as you get leaner, as you get stronger, as you get more advanced, you can start segmenting your training to target different areas, to target different areas of the pectoralis. And now let's take some questions. Let's have some more, um, some more, uh, insight and I'll bring back, I'll bring back on, uh, Instagram. I'll bring back on Instagram and we'll get some more conversation. We'll talk chest. And we'll talk chest training and we'll talk about my favorite exercises because that's usually what I get the most of. I always get, what's your best, what's the best exercise for chest? And today is Monday. So as being International Chest Day, uh, that demonstration. So if you're watching right now on Instagram, make sure you go over to Facebook to catch the video that we just did. Um, my favorite exercise for chest are the basic ones. I really do prefer dumbbells. And the reason why dumbbells are ideal for chest is because you can increase the overload, increase the neuromuscular stimulation on the chest by using two weights as opposed to one. The bench press is classic. It's simple. It's the legendary. Most people can go heavier on a bench press than you could with dumbbells. A lot of people could bench 400 pounds on a bench on a barbell, but not do 200 pound dumbbells. That's obviously a massive difference. And why are they so different? It's because there's two weights as opposed to one, and that increases the overload on your neuromuscular system. The nerves and your nervous system triggers the contraction of the muscle. And when you have to juggle two weights it is more challenging than one. That's why dumbbells are going to be more challenging for your body. Not to mention you have to kick them up or have someone hand them to you. And it's a very awkward, uh, it's a very awkward exercise when you start getting super, super heavy. That's why you don't see max reps and powerlifting competitions with dumbbells for and another reason is you can't you can't control it as well in terms of safety and also accuracy for testing. Um, you know, how far do you push together? Do you tap the dumbbells? It's not really, um, the most, 
it's not necessarily the most functional thing, but it's natural to have things in your hands that are different weights, that are different weights. Like you're, you'll carry groceries. You don't have the same amount of weight on your left arm as you do your right arm. It's never completely even. You have your child in one arm and then you have your purse in the other or uh, your briefcase and, you know, and then you have, you're imbalanced all the time. And that's why yoga, stretching, and proper training styles are important to create balance in the body, to create balance in the body, because we don't work with balance during the day. That's why it's so important to train with balance and both. You get a lot of random shit during the day. So it's important to align yourself. It's, a, it's important to balance your body out, balance your training out, so you can create balance as a foundation, but then also in your training with yoga and with unbalanced training and some of the stabilization stuff that we do. Those of you that are insulin enormous X, you're familiar with the single leg exercise that puts stress on one side and causes the body to need to react and, and stabilize an unstable environment. And that's important too, because we have life is pure chaos. Life is pure chaos. And if you're training with chaos, that just kind of overloads your body with more chaos. You need to train with control and get specific and technical because you don't get specific and technical in your life. That's why bodybuilding works. You don't get that kind of focused overload on certain muscles in the right volume in daily life. You don't put away groceries for five hours and just you're squatting, lifting. You don't put away groceries that weigh 200 pounds. That doesn't make any, I mean, you would get a lot bigger if you did, but that's why we do squats. That's why we do deadlifts. That's why we overload the body with several sets, with moderate repetitions, because we overload the body specifically for what we want to cause as an effect. And if we don't exercise, our body adapts to the overload that it needs to. And we do a little bit of everything every day. We're sitting down, we're standing up, we're walking here, we're lifting this, not too heavy, not too little. We lift something heavy, maybe a bag or a garbage bag once in a while. So we adapt to it and that becomes normal. And that's why building muscle, we have to adapt to something that's more challenging. That's why you have to do overload training repeatedly for a long period of time, you know, over courses of months and years, and then your body adapts to that and gets bigger. So my favorite exercises for, for chest are, I love dumbbells. I love incline dumbbell, flat dumbbell. Not so much. I love incline because I love the stretch and I love, uh, just the way it feels on my shoulder. I can get a lot more of a retraction my scapula, I can get a lot more deep and into the movement. So I prefer that. I also am a big fan of crossovers, uh, but I love a kind of a pressing crossover movement. I love taking the cables and doing a, pr a crossover press, not so much a fly, but a press where I cross over. So as you, you saw from the breakdown, get a lot of that adduction, that horizontal adduction, get a lot of that bringing of the humerus towards the midline of the body. And if you can isolate that, and that's why some of those exercises I've demonstrated in the Daily Swole Club and in Swole Normus X, like the pinch press, are really good for that horizontal and that shoulder adduction, that bringing the arms towards the midline of the action of the chest. Because when you're holding for a pinch press, when you're doing and you're squeezing at the end range of that cable crossover exercise, you are maximizing that horizontal adduction under tension. And when I say horizontal adduction, that just means bringing it together um, in a horizontal plane, kind of like a cross. So it just brings the upper arm, the biceps area, the brachial area towards the midline of the body. All right. So that is one of my, those are two of my, two of my favorites. I love chest dips as well. Wide chest dips with a scapular protraction at the top. I love really pushing forward and kind of rounding my back to get a little bit more of those abdominal fibers that you saw in the breakdown. Actually, I'll bring that up right now. If we bring back the lower fibers, and that's this right here, this area, this dot right here, that's what I really love from those wide chest dips, okay? And you get that real protraction with the scapula, which allows this area to really shorten more. It gets a lot more of that action if you do a protraction with your scapula at the top of the movement of wide chest dips. So you really get into these fibers more when, oops, I pulled that completely out of place. I keep clicking the wrong screen. I keep clicking my, my broadcast section. All right. So when you're protracting at the top and you kind of get that little abdominal crunch, you really build out that lower area, right? Where that dot is here, right there. And that's awesome. So all those different angles that you can achieve 
I love crossover. I mean, I love, um, you know, dumbbell pullovers. That's a great stretch. The dumbbell pullover gets the abdominal section too. And those of you that actually, actually I'm going to bring this back because that's, if I had to pick four exercises, that's what I love. I love those crossover chest presses that really exaggerate the adduction of the humerus. I love dumbbell pullovers because the dumbbell pullovers get this area a lot. And if we zoom out, you can see how a pullover, that means the humerus is over your head. If you know what a dumbbell pullover is, if you don't, you can Google it. Arms come back over your head and you're pulling forward and you're lying horizontal on a bench. And you can see these fibers right here, this area, right? This area right here, this little yellow area right here. See where that is. When you externally rotate the arm and it goes over your head, that goes up in like the armpit area. So that's where that stretch is going to get when you do the dumbbell pullover. And then these fibers here at the bottom are really going to stretch maximally. And you can imagine that when we talk about the dumbbell pullover, when you go and you try that exercise, these fibers right here are stretching the most. They're stretching like crazy, like absolute crazy. So that's a great way to build that abdominal area. And it's great to work on the breath and thoracic expansion. And those are my favorite exercises. I love the dumbbell, dumbbell press. I love chest flies. I like those and the crossover presses and the dumbbell pullovers. You know, pinch press and stuff is great. Pinch press and stuff is great. Uh, but those are really my favorite. Those are really my favorite. And that's why. And now you can see and you, now you can relate to it a little bit more why those exercises actually work in different ways. Why those exercises are different. It's not just, oh, we're doing incline because it's time to do incline. You know, we're not doing incline just because we're not doing incline just because we feel like it. We're doing incline because it works a different area of the body. It works a different area. Now you can manipulate a lot of these things when it comes to bands, when it comes to cables, when it comes to dumbbells, when it comes to barbells, and that's how you can change it to hit those different areas. But if you're just starting out, keep it simple. If you're just starting out, keep it simple. Keep it simple. You no need to get fancy. No need to get fancy. Too many people get fancy. Too many people get fancy when it comes to chest training. Too many people get fancy when it comes to anything, honestly. Um, but as long as you are training with the proper overload, that's what's going to separate you from someone who just sits on a machine. You'll be stimulating your muscle fibers more if you're doing dumbbell exercises, if you're doing cables, if you're doing bands, if you're doing barbell because your body is stabilizing more. Same reason why two weights, why dumbbells are going to challenge you more than a barbell, the same way why a barbell will challenge you more than a chest machine because you have to stabilize. You're going to activate more of those fibers. And then once you build that overload, that volume, that hypertrophy over time, then I would recommend not necessarily getting fancy, but you can get fancier. You can start expanding your chest training, start throwing in more angles, start throwing in more things to mix it up. Okay. And we will do this every Monday. If you, I mean, I, I'm slated, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this every Monday and do a muscle Monday. If you enjoy, uh, enjoyed this content, enjoy this education, kind of the comments really died. Is anyone, is anyone on online? I'm not seeing anything pop up on Facebook. I'm not sure if it disconnected. But if you're enjoying this, if you're enjoying, um, if you're enjoying Muscle Monday and you enjoy that kind of detail, you enjoy the kind of science. I know if you're listening to the podcast, this is something that you're definitely going to want and check out the video. You're definitely going to want to come and check out the video. And I hope what you gather from this, really the takeaways that I want, I know a lot of you, everyone's probably just watching and listening. The takeaway, the main takeaway I want you to get from this type of content is to understand what these phrases mean so you can learn more. So it might inspire you to take your fitness more seriously and take it to that next level on your own and be able to, you're not looking at this adduction flexion. What the fuck does that mean? Wait, I don't get it. It's very simple. When you look at these muscle charts, look at where the origin is, look at where the muscle inserts and it's going to pull in a straight line. Muscles don't push. Muscles don't push. They shorten, they shorten and they lengthen. And depending on where they're shortening and lengthening from what direction, Way, where they're pulling from, where they're reaching out and grabbing and pulling towards themselves, that's going to relate to what action the skeleton takes. That's it. That's where you're going to, that's what's going to happen. If it's pulling from a little bit of a lower angle, it's going to pull that bone down. 
If you're pulling from a higher angle, it's going to pull that bone up. If you're pulling from the front, it's going to pull that bone to the front. That's all it does. That's how muscles work. Muscles don't push. They don't stretch and push. They pull. They shorten. The chest shortens and pulls the humerus forward. And it looks like, hey, we call that pushing. It's not pushing. It's just moving this direction. The pectoralis major is just shortening. A muscle shortens. So once you understand where it's pulling from and how it's shortening, then you just know what it does. And you can pretty much... You can, I want to say guess, but you can deduce what it does just by looking at it. And what's cool and what we'll get more into in the future is not only are there actions that that muscle does because the trick, I don't want to say trick, but the complication and where kinesiology, which is the interaction between those, um, you know, the, the movement, uh, the movement systems of the body, like bones, tendons, ligaments, muscles, all those things, you know, muscles and tendons are kind of the same thing. So, uh, that's what kinesiology is study of kinesiology. But when you have an isolated, that was an isolated function because what complicates the movement of the human body is that the pectoralis major isn't working alone. So if we go back to the pectoralis major, we go back to the scene. Notice how we have this here. Okay. Looks cool, right? You guys ready for this? That's what it really looks like. Okay. That's what it really looks like. So when we actually look at the body as a whole, it's not just the humerus. It's not just the humerus and the pectoralis that are in, involved here. It's not just the pectoralis major. You have the, you have the platysma up here. You have uh, the deltoids here. You have, you know, the serratus anterior over here. You have the obliques here. So you get all these different muscles and not the obliques aren't attached, but the serratus anterior is attached to the scapula. You have the lats are attached to the humerus. You have the deltoid up here attached to the humerus. So you have all these other muscles that are around at the same time. So it's not just, hey, it's the pecs. The pecs do this. When the pecs work, it pulls in this direction. Now you'll start to see why integrated function is also extremely important. So when you have the pectoralis major working, along with the lats or along with the serratus anterior or along with these other muscles, there are integrated actions. When you have certain muscles working in unison or working or contracting or one's holding in tense while the other one works, you might have a different action. So you're going to have isolated actions and you'll also have integrated actions. What that muscle does in conjunction with other ones. So whereas the pectoralis major will do that if you're only pulling on from that direction, but the lats, the rotator cuff, the serratus anterior, you have the deltoid, you have a lot of muscles also in the area. You have a lot of other people that are in the same room, essentially. And then you start getting more complicated, but that's why posture can get out of balance because you have the pectoralis major that's really tight and you have the lats that are really tight and you have the anterior deltoid that's really tight and you have the platysma that's really tight and you have the pectoralis minor that's really tight. You have the abdominals that are really tight. And then you have muscles that are very weak. The infraspinatus is very weak. The teres minor is very weak. The posterior deltoid is very weak. The rhomboids are very weak. Blah, blah, blah is very weak. The lower trapezius. And you have an imbalance. The muscles on the back are sleeping. They're not working. They're very weak. And the muscles on the front are very, very tight, stiff, and stagnant, and fucking petrified. Why? We're always doing stuff to the front. We're always hunched over. We're always driving. We're always in an office at a computer. And that's why yoga, that's why stretching, that's why mobility is so important because that can lead to chronic pain. That can lead to swollen shoulders and inflammation and rotator cuff tears and injuries and bursitis and fucking all that shit. That's where it comes from. You tear your rotator cuff, it's because you have an imbalance, most likely. You have shoulder pain, it's because you have an imbalance, most likely. You have, you know, and that's because of all the little interworkings, but we'll get into that. We'll, we'll discuss that more and more as we get, um, as we get deeper and there's different layers and we'll break into this app. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, later today. And that's the pectoralis major fam. Those are some great exercises. That's what the muscle looks like. And this hopefully will inspire you to pay attention more to what your body does and realize that it's complicated. If you get really, really Mr. Science about it, you can get so into it 
And that's the problem with some of these kinesiology courses in college and courses that you'll take online or anywhere. You're going to learn about the nerves. You're going, to learn, you're going to learn about all this shit that doesn't fucking matter. You're going to learn how to memorize. Oh, don't forget to fill this out in a chart. You can regurgitate information. Fine. But do you know why it does that? Do you know what the best exercises are? The human movements. Do you know what that working too hard too often in most integrated movements, what that's going to cause in the body as an effect? Very important stuff. The application. Being a practitioner of this content in the gym, taking this information and applying it to your fitness and then wanting more. And I can give that to you. And that's really the goal here is to help you understand what this type of stuff means so you can absorb this information better. So you learn your body better. So your workouts can be better. So you can get injured less. So you can see more progress more consistently. All right. So muscle Monday if you have any muscle that you are interested in seeing for next week, make sure you drop it down in the comments. And if it blows the fuck up, we may do it more often. We may do it more often, but I need to see, I need to see that as proof. If you really love it, maybe I'll do a poll, but share this tag someone because this wasn't Papa Swolio ludicrous, you know, swearing and all that stuff. This is really down to earth and very, very technical. I wanted to create a contrast episode that really focused on this type of content to see what you are interested in. It's a nice change. It's a nice change. And I can't, I'm not going to say that I'm never going to fucking swear. Oops. <laughs> but this is going to be a lot more information and I have to really focus on that. And we're not going over philosophy and nutrition um, because I want you to learn. I want you to really get a little bit more serious with your fitness and you're not going to find this shit very easily on the internet. You're not going to find this shit very easily on the internet. And if you find it, it's going to be very confusing. And if you find it, it's going to be all in different fucking places. And it's going to be very like, Oh my God, I don't understand. Like, you know, you're gonna have to piece it together. And then it's like, well, why don't I just go to school? And yeah, you can go to school and get in massive debt and spend hours on the internet, but we'll do it here. So drop what exercise or what body part, not what exercise, what body part you want to see, what body part or what muscle you want to do next, what you interested in, what you want what you want and make sure you flood that. If you really enjoyed it, drop a comment and I might even do a poll here later on Facebook and some other in the other news, brand new driving while gaining. I went absolutely ape shit on the Shiggy challenge. I went ape shit on the Shiggy challenge, new driving while gaining. And that's already on my YouTube channel. And I put a little snippet also on Instagram and I may just drop it on Facebook as well. But right now, go on over to my YouTube channel at Swolnormous and you can subscribe for all the future videos. I put daily Swole clips on there as well. There's vlogs, there's training content, and there is a brand new driving while gaining Shiggy bullshit challenge. And if you don't know what that is, it's when people get out of the car and dance and almost die. And yeah. I tore a new one. I saw people on Instagram saying that new fucking drive mode gaining was hilarious. So go check it out. Yeah, go check it out. If you haven't yet, go check it out and, uh, and share that shit. Get it out there. All right, fam. I hope you enjoyed Muscle Monday. That is the pectoralis major. We'll do another muscle uh, next week. And let me know what you want to see next. Just put that in the comments below. Remember the podcast, Apple Podcast, and Spotify, Overcast, SoundCloud, wherever you like to watch, you can subscribe and you can... Um, get notified when new episodes are uploaded for the podcast. And I will see everyone for tomorrow for episode 816 of the most muscular swole cast, beer cast, broadcast, gain cast, man cast, pimp cast, and sleeves cast in Zarel. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. Thank you so much for joining me for this muscle Monday for 815, the pectoralis major. I'll see you tomorrow for 816. Peace McGee's fam, deuce McGee's, Papa Swolio. Oh, 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 out.